everybody, this is Dave Lee from HES Creates at Gross Steampunk. Wanted to do a little quick vlog on a project that we're working on. This is a uh, post-apocalyptic vehicle um, done up in a Fallout uh, design, uh, paint scheme and all of that. And, but I think it, even though it's a Fallout vehicle, it still works really well for, um, you know, for steampunk and things like this. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've been doing with the paint job. So to start off with, we started out with a Huffy Green Machine, I believe it's what it was called. It is uh, an electric vehicle. There's a motor up in here, chain, drive, front wheel. Um, that red button there is your acceleration, and both of these pedals turn the rear wheels. A lot of fun to drive. It's a 24 volt system. Um, zipping around with my butt in there at 250 pounds, six foot four. So the average person's height and weight should be uh, no problem. Um, this machine gun, the barrels turn, uh, it's mounted to the top. You know, it's a, uh, well, it needs to have a gun. This, uh, but this little Gatling gun here, I've only started to paint it, so I don't judge it right yet. Uh, I just did a couple of base colors, but, um, but what I wanted to show you was is that it, I've, I've been experimenting with this paint I got called Modern Masters Metal Effects Rust. Now, this is really cool, um, and if you've used this already before, then drop some links, uh, or comments in the links, um, drop some comments below, and uh, send me some pictures. I would love to see what you guys did. But um, basically what you do is, the first coat, you have this uh, primer that goes on, and it gives it a, a reddish uh, brown effect. You do two coats of that, I went and as I put it on, I kind of brushed the edges away. I didn't want it to look, um, you know, perfect. This is a dystopian vehicle. Um, and I kind of focused rust where water would drip, um, where angles were. Um, so the exhaust uh, manifold here came off of a uh, Batmobile. And so I've just got rust all over. When I did the paint, I wanted it to be kind of the, the blue had been rubbed down to the to the metal. Of course, this is plastic, but uh, so that presented some fun challenges. And you let that dry a couple, I, th I think the instructions say an hour uh, or two. And then you add this uh, metal effects iron. And this is the oxidizing iron paint. So you do two coats of that with I think 15 minutes in between, and uh, and then you let that sit for an hour. And then what we're going to do after that is is we're going to use some of the rust activator. Now this is going to go into a little mister bottle, so I can lightly mist over it. Um, and then everywhere that I have painted is going to uh, form rust. Now another cool thing for steampunk and and whatnot uh, this paint is good for is that if you use their bronze paint, I've got some of it over here. I, I love using this. Um, so you have the, their bronze, they've got copper. And so like I painted on this one, I used copper to paint these uh, PVC pipes. Once this is done, uh, you can do like a clear coat of, of, you know, satin finish or whatever over it. And then you can go back with the same paint the copper paint painted around here here and then miss that that oxidizer on it and it'll turn like oxidized copper which is green like kind of a bluish green so it gives it a really cool effect um and of course through the magic of filming and waiting and filming again in just a matter of seconds you're gonna see rust wait, you gotta wait a few more seconds i just realized i forgot something so one of the things we want to do on the back here is I'm going to uh, grind the paint down here, 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 and here. And I'm going to weld uh, a bracket that comes up over and, and down, and then a steel bracket, and then from here to here, here to here. So I'll have a pretty decent metal support and a Culligan water bottle. We, uh, Mike found one that doesn't have 
uh, handles. So it looks more like a, a, a boiler. Uh, when I'm done with it, it will look more like a boiler. So it's gonna be a kind of a, a cross between a steam boiler and a nuclear reactor. Um, I know that uh, any science people are going, wait, what? But uh, don't worry, it's, it's my fictional world. And then I have no doubt being the master uh, upholsterer that Mike is, he's gonna make a really cool cushion seat to go here, maybe a piece on the back. Um, some distressed brown leather would be my choice, but uh, we'll see what uh, Mike and Master Creations does. So, now your seconds of waiting are over. So, it's starting to work. It says it takes 30 to 45 minutes for the rust to come through. Um, it also said to don't get it, be sure to not get it on your skin. Uh, eyes, mouth, nose, that kind of stuff, eating utensils, and don't, um, well, make sure that you do this in a well-ventilated space. So I, I definitely have a well-ventilated space, and it's a big open space, but I can definitely feel, um, you know, something's at work here. <laughs> like, it's almost like when you go to an indoor swimming pool and you feel the the, just like the smell of the chlorine. It's not strong like that, but you kind of feel like it's something's going on. I also started painting more of the, the Gatlin gun. It still looks very, very rough, but I'm going to go back with uh, silver and do the edging and stuff like that because I, I like doing the, you know, the edges of, and silver like that. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll come back in a few more seconds and we'll see how much more rust is here. Ah, and there it is. So you get, it ends up being like a light brown color of rust. It's interesting. Um, I think it looks really cool. Definitely a cool effect. Um, it still, I think has a few more minutes. It says give it a half hour to 45 minutes. Um, but I, I love the fact that you can get rust on plastic. <laughs> um, and uh, I think it looks really cool. Um, yeah, so there you go. I also have um, some other rust paint to try out. It's a, uh, from Modern Masters, but it's different. So one was red rust, and one is more brown rust, and give you uh, variations, but. Um, yeah, so the one of the things about this vehicle is that it's the whole purpose is to one to sell it. Um, so if you're interested, let me know. Um, but we wanted to have a vehicle that you know you could put in uh, a large trunk of a car or SUV, something like that. You know that doesn't require a trailer or any kind of the bigger logistics uh, to get it um, around. And that you could drive it at a convention. And because it's a Fallout and a little dystopian, you'll be able to drive it uh, at um, steampunk conventions. You can take it to Comic Cons and uh, have all sorts of fun. So, more later. I went uh, over some of the rough spots with a 400 grit sandpaper just to see what it would do. And uh, don't recommend it. <laughs> it doesn't make rough rust, like big gritty grainy or whatever. It just makes uh, pretty much the same surface that you, that, that you paint. So it doesn't like, you know, get a, a thicker, rougher texture. So there's really no need to sand it. Um, I'm going to let it sit overnight. And then I'm going to do a clear, probably a clear satin finish um, over top of it to protect that, uh, to protect the paint, kind of seal everything in, and then uh, get started on the motor.